This morning, I want to share with you guys, I was not prepared to share with you guys. It's a message I'm still living myself. I talked about it in a very small group setting um, with some people in our church, with some people at my house. Um, but the Lord prompted me this morning to share it with the crew and then to share it again with you guys. So it is a message that will, if you apply it, can change every relationship in your life. It can change every thought process in your life. It can change every way you look at people, every way you think about people, every conversation, everything. So look at your and say everything. everything. I hope you're taking notes this morning. The message I have pre prepared tomorrow has 42 points. How we're going to do that in 30 minutes, I don't know. But we're going to try. I have, a, I have the slides for tomorrow, so at least you can like... <laughs> Like, just write as best you can. Uh, 42 points, just so you guys prepare. 42 points. I wanted to do seven points about what a leader is. And then God said, I've got 14. And I, then I was like, okay. And I was like, I want seven points. You know, seven's a godly number. You know, I'm like trying to be all spiritual. <laughs> I, I need seven points what a leader isn't. Well, he gave me 14. And then I was like, okay, I need seven points on how to grow as a leader, but he gave me 14. So we're just going to try to get through all of them tomorrow, and it will rock your socks off. But this morning, we're going to talk about honor. Because this generation has a problem with that. And anyone in this room is a part of this generation. Okay, There is no age limit on this generation. If you're alive, you're a part of this generation. So all you people that are more mature than... That's a nice way of saying older. Um, if you're more mature or, more, or older, I'm still talking about you, so don't be shaking your head at all of us young guys in here this morning. Okay, this, this message is for everybody. Um, so, uh, my granddad uh, lives in the same city that I live in, and I started playing golf with him um, on Fridays. Now, in high school, I played golf uh, like for the school, and uh, wasn't very good, uh, but I like to play. Well, after high school, I realized that it's expensive to play golf. And in high school, I get to play for free every day. Then if you want to play every day out of man, dude, it gets expensive. So I stopped playing for a long time. But my granddad works at the golf course. He's retired, and so he kind of works up there. And he said, hey, Ben, you want to play golf with me? And I said, yes, I'm off every Friday. He said, every Friday you want to go play golf? It's on me. I said, Ben, I'm going to be there. So the very first time I went to go play golf with him, I'm excited, right? I have not like played like in a while, and usually when I would play, it was like random. So I would play, but then I wouldn't play. So I wasn't taking it super serious. But I was like, today, because I get to play every week now, I'm gonna start trying to get better. So I remember like getting up there, and I'm gonna like practice my swing, and uh, you know I'm like warming up, trying to look all cool, you know, like, I know what I'm doing. I ain't, my golf clubs are all dusty, but I'm still like looking, trying to look good. And uh, so I put our tee time was at 8:05. So I put my tee in the ground, put the ball on, and I'm warming up, and I'm about to hit. And my granddad said, hey, hold on, Ben, there's some guys up there in front of you. You don't want to hit into them. He said, I think you can hit far. And it was, they were like 500 yards away. So, yeah, he was right. I'm just <laughs> so you guys are like, what? You don't play golf. 500 yards, that's a long way. Um, no, they, they weren't that far, but maybe 450. Um, anyways, he was like, hey, I'm gonna, let me hit first because I don't hit as far as you. And I was like, all right, cool. So he gets up there and he swings and it's a good, good, perfect shot right down the middle of the fairway. And uh, then I got up to swing. And so when I finally hit, it was a great shot right where I was wanting it to go. A little bit to the right, but not bad. And um, and so the reason why you know I had to wait is there were some guys in front of me that were you know going. So after a few holes, they I was I was finding myself getting frustrated because these older guys, there's four of them in two different carts, were just taking their sweet little time. You know, I'm talking, man. They were they were probably just having a casual beer, drinking, you know, playing their golf. It was early Friday morning. And, and, uh, and I found myself getting frustrated because I am the type to, like, dude, let's play. Come on, I'm here to be, like, dude, I'm working on my shot. And I'm sitting in the golf cart waiting more than anything else. And then finally, okay, now I get to swing. And then I go sit and I wait. And then I go sit and I wait. 
Uh, but then God kind of rocked me, and he started talking to me about honor. And so this is where I want to go this morning. Um, we're going to dive into it, but I'm going to finish this example, and we'll dive into it. Whenever I lined up at first, my tea time was at 8.05. I didn't even look at the time. I was so excited. I was just ready to swing and smash that ball. And I believe that in our lives, there's times where God has equipped you. He has called you. He has anointed you. And you are ready to step into that calling. And many times, if not every time, we get up to the ball without checking, is it my time? I don't even know if I was in the right time or not. My tea time was at 8.05. I didn't even look. I just got excited. There's no one up there. It must be my time. And I was about to hit. Well, on a golf course, if I hit somebody, has anyone ever been hit by a golf ball? I'm talking that thing. Dude, that will cripple you. Like, if I threw a golf ball from here to there, it would hurt. But let alone coming from a swell man like me. <laughs> man, I could kill somebody with a golf ball. So if I would have got up there and hit, and my ball would have hit those dudes, one, I could have seriously hurt somebody. I'm talking seriously. But two, you don't do that. So I would have gotten in trouble by the golf course for hitting into the people in front of me. And if I would have continually do that, golf courses have these things called marshals that would have kicked me off the golf course and said, I don't care what you paid, you're done. Get out of here. You're not following our rules. And in our lives... When you, get, when you get your calling, you get your anointing, whenever you're ready, sometimes, number one, we don't even check to see what time, and two, we're so ready to swing that we're hitting into the generation in front of us. There are people in front of us that we're not even paying attention to, and we hit them. We hurt them. Not intentionally. Man, they're up there having a good time. And you know what's crazy is that they paid to play in front of me. They have earned the right to be in front of me. So there's nothing that I can say. I don't care how slow they're playing. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care what their swing looks like. I don't care how goofy their pants look. I don't care what kind of hat they're wearing. It doesn't matter. I'm in the wrong. So whenever it comes time for us to step up, if we don't wait for the right timing, I don't care what leader is above you. I don't care how they talk. I don't care what they dress like. I don't care what they believe in. It doesn't matter. They've paid to play. There's no excuse you can tell me that will validate you hurting the generation in front of you. Period. There's nothing. How do you hurt the generation in front of you when you try to step over them? When you tell them, hey, I've got better ideas than that. What are you thinking, you old fart? I'm going to be honest. After like... After, like, the third hole, I was mad. Like, dude, these old dudes need to get out of my way. Okay? Because it's common golf courtesy that if people are following you, you just let them play through. There was just two of us. There's four of them. And they were just taking their sweet little time. They didn't let us play through. And I started finding myself getting frustrated. Like, super frustrated. And I, when I played golf in high school, the, my golf coach always used to tell me, the most important shot in golf is the next one. Well, I couldn't even think about the next one because I can't even get up to the current one. I'm like, come on, man, this is taking forever. <laughs> Have you ever served underneath a leader and you feel like it's really slow? Yeah. Right? You feel like, man, like, I wish we could just speed this thing up. Like, come on, where's the energy? Where's the excitement? Yeah. If you're not careful, as genuine as your heart is, right. you're going to hurt somebody. That's right. You're going to overstep somebody. Right. You're going to do something that is, no matter how you word it, you're in the wrong. Right. So then later on the back nine, uh, we get probably like hole 12, hole 13. I line up, got my shot. It's like a par three or so, I think. And I'm about to hit like a nice seven iron or an eight iron or something. I'm about to nail it whew, right there. And then I'm like, dude, where are the old dudes? Like, finally, I get to hit and I ain't got to worry about it. This is nice. I'm about to hit and I realize, oh, wait, they're back here. I was about to hit to a completely different hole. I regret it. Remember, I've never played this golf course before. So thank God there were some old dudes in front of me because I was about to hit to a completely different hole. Wow. So what we, don't, what we take for granted is that the generation in front of us, as slow as they are, as much as we may not agree with how they're leading, they're leading us to the next hole. If I would have hit on my own, I would have gone to a different hole, and then I would have finished the game, I would have looked at the scorecard and be like, whoa, I missed an entire three holes. You can miss an entire season that God has for you by not following the generation in front of you. 
you can step out and hit, man. Go for it. Go ahead. Hit. Hit to whatever hole you want, but you won't miss a whole lot. And you've paid for 18 holes, and we're going to get to the end of this race, and you're going to look back and say, I only, I only played nine. I only played 12 because you hit on your own. You didn't follow. So as much as I was annoyed with how slow they were playing, I was so thankful at that moment because I was like, dude, I was about to hit to a completely different hole. And so as I'm learning about all this, as, as I'm honestly in my flesh upset about these guys, the Holy Spirit is rocking me about honor. So we're going to talk about honor. I wanted to share that scripture because it's a perfect example of what we're going to talk about today with honor. Because respect and honor are two different things. Okay, we're going to talk about that. So if you guys have your Bibles, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. I'll be sure you guys turn it on so you all see it. It says, honor everyone. Who's Everyone. Everyone, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. The, transla the Passion Translation says this, recognize the value of every person and continually show love to every believer. Live your lives with great reverence and holy awe of God to um, honor your rulers. All right, now we're going to go to Romans chapter 13, verse 7. Romans 13, verse 7. Romans 13, verse 7. It says, Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom re revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, and honor to whom honor is owed. Two things I want to point out about that scripture. One, respect and honor aren't the same thing, or else the Bible would have put them together. It said, pay respect to those that need respect and pay honor to those who need honor. But then two, it also portrays that honor is a payment. It's intentional. How many guys, the most annoying thing about our government is taxes. <laughs> you don't know why? Because if you don't, they, they expect you to pay your taxes. They know how much you owe, but they won't tell you. They want you to figure it out on your own. <laughs> And then when you don't pay the right thing, they penalize you. And they're like, why don't you just tell me what I owe in the first place? Well, just tell me what I owe and I'll pay it. Or tell me what I'm going to get back. Cool. And then you can go to jail when they already have the information, right? So it portrays that honor is like paying taxes. you got to do something with it. You've got, to, you've got to do it. It can't just come naturally. Now, I was raised in the South. Some of you guys aren't, weren't as blessed as I was. Um, <laughs> but in the South, man, respect comes natural. Uh, Miss Michelle, her husband, Johnny, would hit me on the chest. <clears throat> Boy, don't let Miss Michelle ever carry anything. All right? Like, I'd be sitting there and she'd come walking with a cooler. He'd be like, son, get up. Go help her. <laughs> Respect was beaten into me. <laughs> Johnny Powers. So now it's natural. Like, just now, Miss Michelle was carrying something. I saw Thomas beeline to her. He was like, do you need help? It's just in us. It's just in us to respect, okay? It's respect is opening a door for a lady. That's just natural. Like, some people, it's not natural, but there's certain areas that, you know, like, it's just natural. It's natural for me in the South to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, sir. Like, it was natural. And I'm teaching my son that should come natural. Yeah, that's good. You, that, that, should, that should be part of who you are. But then honor is something different. Mm -hmm. Because I can honor someone, um, I, or I'm, I'm sorry, I can respect someone and they never know. Right? Because it's just, it's, it's, it, it doesn't have to be intentional, but honor is something different. Um, so write this down. Honor is the only commandment with a promise. Honor is a, the only commandment with a promise. The Bible says to love the Lord your God, no promise. Love your neighbor, no promise. Commit murder, no promise. But you know what he says? In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you. And that you may live long in the land. I don't think he's specifically talking about honoring your mom and dad. He's saying if you choose to honor, you're going to live long. Yes. Yeah. I wonder how many people in this life have died early. Because they didn't know how to honor. If my life is dependent on honor, I think I should tackle this issue of honor. That's good. That's good. Right? Because if it's that important that God says it's the first commandment with the promise that you may, it may go well with you 
and that you may live long in the land. You know what I love about that scripture? It doesn't say a long existence. It says a long life. Two different things. You can exist for a long time, just kind of mosey through life, but the Bible promised me an abundant life. Life and more abundantly, not existence and more. You guys know everyone that's just kind of existing. They don't have a really purpose. They don't have any drive. They're just kind of going day to day. No, that ain't for me. <laughs> I want a powerful life. I want a blessed life. So guess what? I want to figure out honor. Because honor is the direct connection between a prosperous life. A long last, lasting life. A blessed life. A healthy life. Ooh, so I'm going to go there. First Peter. Chapter thir- chapter three verse seven says, "Likewise, husbands, live with your li- live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the women as the weaker vessel." And all the men said, oh, no, <laughs> "That's not honoring. Stop it." <laughs> Since they are heirs with you of the grace, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Yes. Another promise. Mm-hmm. We see honor. And you'll live a long life. Now we see honor and your prayers won't be hindered. When was the last time you prayed and you didn't hear anything? I want to have you check your honor life before you check anything else. The Bible says if you'll honor, your prayers will never be hindered. Another example why we need to learn what honor is and why we need to honor. So here's here's what honor is. Honor is these four things. It's weight. It's substance. It means to elevate or add value. Mm-hmm. Weight, substance, elevate or add value. Mm-hmm. We'll give you guys five things on what honor is. Five things. You guys ready? That was the definition of honor, but now these are five things. Number one, honor always recognizes value. Mm-hmm. Honor always recognizes value. I have this ring on my finger right now. I buy three of them online on Amazon for $12. Little, little stretchy things. I was at the lake the other day. My dad was driving me like a madman on the boat, and I was on the tube, and uh, destroyed me and my brother. And we both came off the tube, and I was like, dude, I lost my ring. And my brother was like, dude, me too. And I was like, ah, it's all right. I got another one in the house. But so then, my wife jumps in the water, and I said, whoa, babe, take your ring off. I just lost mine. Yours can't, I, we can't afford that thing to fall in the bottom of the water. Right? Like, that thing's worth way more than $12 on Amazon, okay? If that thing falls, it's done. And uh, so she took it off for the boat. But see, honor recognizes value. If I'm going to place honor on Lennon, I'm choosing to value him in my life. I can walk by Lennon every day and respect him, but if I'm going to honor him, I have to let him know his value. So I'm saying you're worth more than a 12 cent ring when I choose to honor someone. So when you choose to honor someone, you're you're identifying the value they have in your life. So if someone is valuable to you in your life, you'll choose to honor them. What is honor? Substance. We said it's weight, substance, elevate, or add value. All right, so number one. Okay, oh, here's one. Man, (laughs) honor always recognizes value. Uh, when you show up late to a service and your team has been there practicing for a long time, you're saying that they're not valuable. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you show up late to a meeting that your youth pastor scheduled and you, you show up five minutes late, you're saying that my time is more valuable than yours. That's not honor. That's dishonor. You show up ten minutes late to work, you're saying that this time is not valuable to me. Come on. You're on your phone on Instagram in the middle of your pastor preaching. You're saying that your Instagram is more valuable than the word that's being preached from the pulpit. Okay? Dishonor. Mm -hmm. Unintentional dishonor. We're going to get there here in a little bit what dishonor is. But dishonor can be very unintentional. Mm -hmm. Woo! Come on. Honor. All right, number one, honor always recognizes that. Number two, honor always involves humility. Honor always involves humility. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 15.33 says, The fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom, and humility comes before honor. Mm-hmm. Humility comes before honor. If you can't get over yourself, you're never going to be able to honor someone else. That's right. That's good. Never going to be able to honor someone else. You have to make the conscious decision, hey, 
I don't need to, I don't need to praise right now. I'm gonna choose to honor you. Good. I'm going to choose it. I'm going to put myself low. You guys know what humility is. Placing yourself lower and lifting someone else's higher. I'm going to choose to lower myself to honor this other thing. I'm going to choose honor. Uh, number three. Honor is always active or intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Honor is always active or intentional. Remember, the definition of honor was this. Weight substance to elevate to add value. Honor, you can't honor someone without doing something. You can never honor someone without doing something. How do you honor? By words, giving gifts, acts of service, whatever it is. But you have to do something. Respect can be kind of back, back seat. But honor has to be intentional. If I'm going to say that I respect someone, I can respect Donald Trump, but I've never met him before. I can respect Kevin Durant. Actually, I don't, but... <laughs> wow. I can respect a basketball player from a distance, but if I wanted to honor them, I have to be in person with them and say, man, I want to honor you right now. Here's a check, or here's something. You know, like, I want to honor you. There's a huge difference between respect and honor. Yes, that's right. So you can respect someone and not honor someone. Mm -hmm. But you can never honor someone and not respect them. I said that again. I said you can respect someone and not honor them, but you can never honor someone without having respect as well. That's right. That's good. All right. So that was number three. Number four. Honor always involves generosity. Mm -hmm. yes. Honor always involves generosity. I'm gonna say this: you can't be a giver without being honoring. Mm -hmm. That's right. You wanna know why? Because the Bible says it. Proverbs three verse nine: Honor the Lord with your wealth. And with the first fruits of your produce. If that's how we honor God, it's the same formula down. Mm -hmm. right. He set the example how we honor Him, but that's the example how I honor the people that are above me, my leaders. That's how I honor the people around me, and that's how I honor the people below me. Mm -hmm. I honor with generosity. Yes, that's good. You've got to be generous. You've got to be a giver. Mm -hmm. Because honor, you have to give honor. Mm -hmm. Honor good. cannot, you can't be stingy with honor. Oh, I've got some honor. I'm keeping right. it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't going to work. I have to give on. Uh, remember, honor places value on someone or something. Okay, number five. Honor is never demanded. It is always given. Yeah, that's good. Honor is never demanded. It's always given. I remember there's many times over the course of me being in ministry that I wanted to demand honor. And if I'm being honest in my immature days, I probably did try to demand honor. Do you know I'm a 21-year-old pastor? You better honor me. Why did I just have a nasty country accent? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't demand honor if I said, Lennon, I want you to honor me right now. You're not actually honoring me. You're doing it because I told you to. That is not honor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So as leaders, if you're saying, leadership team, I demand you to honor me. You will honor the gift that God has placed on me. You will honor my voice. Nah, they ain't honoring. If Pastor Stephen came up here and said, hey, let's honor Pastor Ben, and all of you guys are honoring because he said it versus a heart reason, uh -huh. you're not actually honoring. That's right. Because honor means I have to be intentional about it. That's right. I have to give something. That's good. I have to, I have to do it. Yeah, that's right. Woo! That's good. Once you know this, that honor, if you're going to honor someone, the person you're honoring has to know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. That's good. If I was going to honor Pastor Todd... See, I can respect him, and he doesn't have to know. But I'm going to honor Pastor Todd. He better be in the room. He better hear my voice. He better see my gift. He better see something. He better feel valued. That's right. He needs to feel elevated. Mm -hmm. He needs to feel it. He needs to hear it. So if you're going to honor someone, make sure they know about it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, so if you appreciate your pastor's preaching on Sunday mornings, go honor him by telling him. Right. We can respect the message from afar, but if I want to honor the message, man, I'm going to go talk to him. Yeah, right. I'm going to go. I'm going to do this thing. Woo. All right. Let's turn to Numbers chapter 12. You guys getting something this morning? Yeah. Now, this is where the Holy Spirit is about to start rocking your world, okay? Because now we know what honor is. We're about to figure out what dishonor is. Dishonor is unintentional. Let me say this. To disrespect someone, they have to hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. It's 
I can respect you and you ain't got to hear it, but I'm going to disrespect you. You got to be able to hear it. But see, to honor someone, they've got to hear it. But to dishonor someone, they don't have to hear that. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. I could dishonor all day long, and that person never has to hear it. Mm -hmm. I could dishonor Pastor Todd right now, and he doesn't have to be in the room. And he would be dishonored. Mm -hmm. You can dishonor your leadership in your mind, in your thoughts. Yes. Yes. That's right. You can dishonor. Ooh, so, man, I have dishonored. So much in casual conversations, not even meaning to. Mm -hmm. Man, did you see what so and so did? Come on, man, they should know better. Dishonor. Do what? If I'm on a praise and worship, team, why did he play the guitar like that, man? That's ridiculous. Dishonor. Why doesn't that leader step up? Dishonor. Even if you're thinking it, you ain't got to say it to dishonor. See, honor to honor, you've got to give. You gotta say something, but to dishonor, you ain't gotta say a word. Maybe in your thoughts. Mm, if I'm being honest and vulnerable, my dad's in the room. He can value it. He can credit this, and so I'm not flaunting it. But there was a there was a time in my life where I dishonored my dad in my thought process. I never told a person, but the Holy Spirit checked me when I was getting this download, and I went to him. It was last year at our lake trip. Remember that day? And I went to him and said, "Dad, I want to I want to apologize. Ask you to forgive me because I've been dishonoring you in my thoughts." I've been tearing you to pieces about stupid. See, it's the devil, but it was unintentional. You don't mean to dishonor him. It don't come now. Like, you're not choosing. Oh, I can't wait to dishonor him. <laughs> no one does that. It comes unintentional, right? Oh, let me think how I can dishonor him in my thoughts. Like, no, you don't do that. But I believe the Holy Spirit, as we're going to learn about dishonor, he's going to start showing you how you've been dishonoring. Mm -hmm. yes. And some corrections you need to make. It's so freeing when you finally stop dishonoring and you start yeah. choosing to honor. I'm sorry, right. God. All right. <coughs> Numbers chapter 22, verse 2. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married. Yeah, Numbers 12. I said 22? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, guys. Numbers 12, verse 1. I'm sorry. Numbers 12, verse 1. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married. For he had married a Cushite woman. And he said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Remember, this is like his brother and sister-in-law or his brother and sister or something like this. This is, this is Moses' people. Um, or maybe his son. I don't know who, who these people are. But anyways, so these are, close to, these are close to Moses. These people are close to Moses. And behind the scenes... They're not talking in front of a crowd. They're not talking in front of their youth group. They're not talking in front of people that shouldn't hear. They're just talking amongst themselves. See, me and my wife, after hearing all this, have had to thank you. Have had to check our conversations behind closed doors. Because I can dishonor just by talking to my wife. Watch. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken to us also? And look what it says. I want you to underline this in your Bible. And the Lord heard it. Yes, that's right. What did he hear? Dishonor. Uh -huh. Did Moses hear the dishonor? No. They were talking about it. I was like, what does he know I'm marrying this other woman? You know what it was? I believe this is one of the first forms of prejudice in the Bible. Yes, uh -huh. You married a woman of a different color, of a different race? What the heck is he doing? And it doesn't say that Moses heard it. Who heard it? God heard it. So dishonor, that person ain't got to hear, but you know who is hearing it every time? God is hearing your dishonor every single time. Every time. Now the man Moses was very meek, more than all the people who were on the face of the earth. Verse 4, and suddenly the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam, get out, you three, to the tent of meeting. Moses probably don't even know what the heck's going on at this point. But it bothered God, dishonored, bothered God so much that it said he said, Hey, you three, get your butts out of here right now. We've got to correct this thing right now. I ain't standing for this. Why? Because Moses was a place of leadership. He was anointed. He was called. He paid to play. Remember golf? Aaron was following up Moses, but hey, Moses was paid to play. He was in front. It don't matter what he was swinging. It don't matter the decisions he was making, whether you believe in the decisions of your leaders or not. Aaron obviously didn't believe the decision Moses just made. And he spoke ill. He didn't act ill against it. 
He didn't rebel against it. He thought against it. He spoke against it. And God said, get your butts out here. We're about to fix this thing. Verse 5, and the Lord came down. Come on, he, God did not come down like this very often. Verse 5, and the, and the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent. How many times have you ever seen God come down in a pillar of cloud? So if he comes down in a pillar of cloud right here, right now, it's got to be pretty intense. And God was willing to come down to that magnitude because dishonor affects him that much. It is that real to him. A conversation behind closed doors in a tent where no one else heard. God heard it and said, no, we correct that that right now. Came down in a pillar of cloud. And he said, Aaron and Miriam. And he called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forward. And he said, hear my words. Boy, if, if God comes out of a cloud of fire or a cloud, of, uh, a cloud and he says, hear my words, boy, but it's got to be serious. And so he goes on and he said, if there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I speak mouth to mouth clearly and not in riddles. He beholds the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Correcting him. Hey, I anointed that dude. Why are you speaking against my anointing? Why are you thinking bad against the person that I call? I speak to him mouth to mouth. Everyone else has to hear through him. I speak directly to him. And you're speaking against him. Your leaders, in the same boat. Your parents, same boat. The Bible says honor everyone. New Testament took a little bit further. We honor everyone. This ain't just about leadership no more. This is about everyone. Ooh. Verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. My God, I would never <laughs> pour God mad at me. Let alone Old Testament God mad at me. <laughs> he about to swallow somebody up. He about to burn somebody up. He about to do something. He about to throw you into a whale's mouth. He about to do something. And watch what he does. When the cloud removed from over the tent, behold... Miriam was leprous like snow. I want you to write this down. Dishonor to God is just like leprosy. Dishonor to God is just like leprosy. It'll eat your skin away. It'll tear you apart. It'll stink. You'll smell. No one will want to be around you. If you come in contact with anyone, you're contagious and they'll catch it. Dishonor is contagious. If I had leprosy and I touched Sean just like that, boom, you just got it. Within a day, dude, your skin's about to be nasty. If you carry dishonor, don't be just surprised when everyone around you has dishonor. Every, I'm talking, it is so contagious. Whew. And Aaron turned toward Mary, and behold, she was leprous. Verse 11, and Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord. Don't punish us because we have done foolishly and have sinned. Let us not be as one dead, but flesh is eaten half away when he comes out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord. Man, man, this, talk about a leader. Mm -hmm. Finds out that he was just dishonored. God comes down and establishes how important dishonor is to God. Shows him by saying, hey, look, you're, now you've got leprosy. And what an amazing leader. And I promise your pastors are in the same boat. You can dishonor them, and they're still going to go to the Lord and fight for your behalf. Amen. Right here we see, and Moses cried to the Lord, Oh God, please heal her, please. But the Lord said to Moses, If a father had spit in her face, she would have been shamed seven days. Let her be shut outside the camp seven days, and after that she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut outside the camp seven days, and the people did not set out on the march till Miriam was brought in again. Dishonor is contagious. Mm -hmm. Honor has so much value. Yes. I want you guys to be good thinking, what have I done to dishonor? We just saw two people in a tent in closed doors dishonor someone and look, he, that she got leprosy for seven days. I believe that God's, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His idea about dishonor has not changed. The way he handles it is differently now because of the blood of Jesus. 
But if the blood wasn't shed, every time we had dishonor, we would show up with leprosy. He's a just God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. But the punishment should be the same. And in God's eyes, it is. So guess what? Every time we dishonor, the Bible says that Jesus is in between us. He's, what is it? He's in, in or whatever. So, every, yeah, what is it? Yeah, he's, he's our intercessor. Yeah. He's, he's fighting in between. So guess what? Every time you dishonor, you know, like, I think, I watched the Passion of the Christ, and Christ many years ago and broke down just seeing Jesus' body mm -hmm. destroyed. Jesus, as powerful as he is sitting on the right hand of the Father, is still fighting for us every day. And every time you dishonor, you're giving him leprosy. He's taking it on his body every time we choose dishonor. You think ill against your pastor? You think ill against Michael this afternoon with Cam Wars? Yeah. I'm being serious. Dishonor is that yeah. is that real? Yeah. You think it, you might as well, it's over. You say it unintentionally to people, it's over. This is a serious game. Remember, honor is the only commandment with the promise. You want to live long? You want to live a, an abundant life? You want to live a prosperous life? Choose honor. You want to die of leprosy? You want to be contagiously nasty? You want people to avoid you? You want to get kicked out of places? Go ahead, dishonor. I want you guys to write this down. Dishonor is unintentional. Dishonor is unintentional. I think it's Romans... Oh, no, Numbers 12. Sorry. I want you guys to look at this. I think it's the Passion Translation. I'll read mine, but the Passion Translation says, forgive us of this thoughtless sin. Which means dishonor can be a thoughtless sin. You don't have to actually mean dishonor. You don't have to be focused on it. It can be an unintentional thing. But, if we, but remember, honor has to be intentional. I have to give honor. I have to do something. <coughs> Respect and honor are two different things. That's right. And so this morning, we're, we're, we'll wrap this up. There's so much more to this. Apply it to your life. I'm telling you right now, dishonor and honor, man. I'm telling you, leaders, don't let your people dishonor. Every single one of us are leaders. So I'm talking to all of us. You have the power to shut down a conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, after God showed me this, some of, some of us in our church, man, it rocked us. Some of the younger people. And now we're very cautious about not wanting to dishonor. So a conversation, me and Matt could be talking and we're like, wait, are we dishonoring right now? I don't know if we are or not. Let's just stop talking about that. It's that simple. Like, I don't know if this is dishonoring. I don't know if this is dishonoring. So we just shut it down. Seriously, don't. We? Like, I am that afraid. The Bible says that fear of the Lord. I am that fearful of the Lord, of dishonoring even the Lord. I don't even want to have a conversation like that. Even if it never makes it back to the original person, not going there. No. I don't care what I think, how wrong they were. Nope, not doing it. The Bible says honor your king. The first script, uh, scripture says is honor everyone, honor the king, honor the Lord. So honor your leadership. Regardless, God puts place in there for a reason. Aaron and Miriam obviously thought that what Moses was doing was wrong. They spoke two sentences and got leprosy for it. It doesn't matter if you think your leader's in the wrong. They are your leader. They are anointed by God. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You think bad. You speak bad. God places you in the boat with leprosy. Wow. If we want to take it further, I'm not, I don't know. I don't have all the scriptures to back this up. So I'm just going to say it. For seven days, she was shut, shut out and didn't get to talk to God. Think about it. Back in the day, the only way you could talk to God was through Moses. Now she's separated from Moses. She can't even hear from God right now. So I wonder, I know God doesn't hold chips on his shoulder. Remember, we're in the New Testament. The blood has been applied. We're good. But I do believe that there's an element of it. Because remember, we read the scripture that if you honor your wife, then your prayers won't be hindered. So it's not that God ignores us. He's not a God like that. He's a father. man. If you ask for a loaf of bread, he's not going to give you a snake. But at the same point in time, I believe that sometimes he waits to see if you're going to get over this honor thing or not. Lord, please, I need an answer. Well, hold on. You need to get over this honor thing first. Before I can answer this, boy, this is a huge issue for me. 
God did not come down in a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud for prosperity, for money, for sickness. You know what he came down for? Dishonor. But he sent a son for all those other things. An even better thing than a pillar of cloud. But there was something intentional, something powerful about a pillar of cloud coming down saying, hey, we're done with this. So this morning, we have to make a heart check. In our heart, I'm done with dishonor. I hope that the Holy Spirit's rocking you right now and all the times you've been dishonoring. As a leadership team, all of you, like, groups that have come, I promise there's been conversations you guys have been a part of or had that were dishonoring. Maybe even about your youth pastor that brought you. <laughs> Unintentional sin. You didn't mean to. But now that you know, now you know. <laughs> so next time you do it, the Holy Spirit will bring that correction. He will bring that conviction because now you know. Now you know. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we thank you for sending your Son <laughs> to help us. Holy Spirit, we are so thankful you're our helper. But we make a vow today. Come on, just make your own vow. I'm going to pray. You make your own vow. But Lord, we vow today to choose honor and to not dishonor. Lord, I choose to place value, to elevate, to, to add value to people in my lives, whether they're my leader, whether they're my peer, whether they're under me. It doesn't matter. I will choose to honor. I will not be the person that swings and hits above my time and hits into people and hurts people because I'm not. No, I choose to honor. If that means waiting, I'll wait. If that means getting off the court, I don't matter, Father. I will choose to honor today. Lord, we ask you to also forgive us for all the times that we've been dishonored. Holy Spirit, for reminding us of those times, we ask you to forgive us right now for those dishonoring thoughts, those dishonoring conversations, those dishonoring actions. We ask you to forgive us from dishonor right now. Wash us clean right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. amen. So here's what I want you guys to do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's what I want you to do. Just like I shared the example, go to my dad. If you've been dishonoring, you got to go fix it. Even if it was thoughtless sin. I'm telling you, there's something freeing about asking for forgiveness. I'm not saying I'm sorry. I'm not going to get all crazy on y'all, but sorry is not in the Bible. Forgiveness is. Ask for forgiveness. Okay? And I probably, Dad didn't even know I was being dishonored. You know what he said to me? Of course I forgive you. I didn't even know. We're good. It wasn't even an issue. Because the issue isn't with him. It's with me. He ain't got leprosy. I do. <laughs> he probably was wondering, why is this dude stinking all the time? Not naturally, but like, why is his attitude so? He don't know. He knows something. He may have thought something was off. It was dishonored. That one was off. So whatever the Holy Spirit has been asked, telling you about, you got to fix it. And it's, dude, I promise you, God is good. The people you go talk to are going to be like, yeah, absolutely. And I promise they probably identified you being off for a while. And the second you ask for forgiveness, it's like a clean slate. It's a clean slate. You and that relationship with whoever that is is about to start over brand new, on a new page, and you won't have bad thoughts anymore. You'll see them as the leader that God has called them to be. You're going to follow underneath the anointing. And I believe that after this happened, we see that Moses, you know, later that Aaron stepped up. I don't know that would have happened if he didn't fix this. He had to fix this first. So in our own lives, you may be waiting for your time to go hit that ball. But it ain't time yet, and it will never be your tea time until you figure out honor. Then you're waiting like, God, when is it my time to swing? God, Lee, I've been waiting forever. I've been serving in this youth ministry for 17 years. Am I ever going to be asked to preach an offering message? My God, there's someone who just served yesterday, and they can't even read the Bible. <laughs> and God is waiting. It ain't your time because you are dishonoring even in that. Even how you're asking me is dishonoring. I'm being serious. Let's fix this dishonor. All right? Honor always wins. Always. I can't tell you how many times I've had people dishonor the junk out of me. Disrespect me in front of people, in front of teams that I'm leading, a, team, a part of teams I'm a part of. And guess what? I still choose to honor them back. My honor is not dependent on how you react or act. 
Period. You can dishonor the junk out of me, and I will not choose to get leprous. Uh uh. You know how I'm going to fight dishonor? With honor. Oh, you don't like the way I'm doing that? Let me tell you how awesome you're doing your job. And I'm doing it not out of spite. I'm being honest. Dude, you are the best dude I've ever been a part of. You're the best team member. You are the And they're like, what? what? It'll rock people's lives. And you're not doing it. You have to do it and honestly. Because then you're not honoring if you're doing it just to prove a point. That's not honor. Right? We've talked about that. So you, if, if someone's dishonoring you, don't jump on board and get just all leprosy. Choose honor. All right? Did you guys get something this morning? Yes. Woo! Praise God.